Hey guys, um, Jessica here with Copper Desert Permaculture. We're going to see how this goes. I'm calling this a little talk and walk. This is mostly to help me process some stuff while we're getting ready to go off grid here. And what I really wanted to talk about today is staying motivated long term. I've been thinking about that a lot this week. It's easy to get excited about stuff and get stuff going in the short term, but when you're looking at a project that's going to be years and years and years to potentially the rest of your life, how do you keep that motivation going? And I'm kind of a planner by nature, so I'm trying to think of strategies to do that. Got my notes here. Like I said, we're keeping it very cash. Hopefully this guy is enjoying the walk as well. Usually he does. So the first thing I was thinking about is saying it out loud, which is basically a big part of what this channel is for me is saying what we're going to do out loud. It's also kind of a fake it till you make it thing. I'm not pretending to be any kind of expert here. We're learning as we go along. But if you say things like, I'm a homesteader, I'm moving to go off grid, it kind of helps to create that reality because you start thinking of yourself in that light, right? And I also think when you say things out loud, it holds you accountable because other people are hearing that you're doing that thing. And so it makes you a lot less likely to back out. And when you say things out loud, I think maybe it invokes a little bit of pride around that subject in the sense that if you did back out, what does that say about your character? And of course, sometimes people need to back out of things for all kinds of really legitimate reasons. But if it becomes a pattern in your life, is that a pattern you want to continue? Is that who you want to be? You know, I definitely have been working or trying to work on integrity um, at this point in my life. And so part of that is, you know, saying what you mean and meaning what you say. The next thing I'm trying to do is small things daily. There will be a lot of big things. We've already done some big things. We've acquired our land. We're working on the camper renovation, but it's just not realistic to do big things every day. So, but I think it helps you stay motivated when you do small things every day. For example, you know, doing small videos here and there and learning. Oh my gosh, Jag and I are doing so much learning. And that is definitely something you can do small every day, whether it's watching a video on doing raised beds or rainwater harvesting or, you know, storing food, whatever. Those are all small things you could do every day. Another thing I know Jag is doing is he bought a really cool planner. And so he's kind of using it as a journal as well, but he's using it to write down his ideas, things he's accomplished and things he wants to accomplish. And so that's fun too, small things daily. One thing I'm doing to keep me from backpedaling out of fear is to take the long view. Um, to think in long terms. So maybe short term, certain things will be difficult, but long term, what does it look like if we don't do this? You know what I mean? What does that mean for my family? I feel like if we stay here in this cute little suburb and I keep working as a nurse and Jag keeps doing his landscaping business, I can kind of see what that looks like 30 years down the road. And I'm not saying it's bad to be in that kind of situation, but you only get one chance at this mortality, you know, and I just, this, what we're doing right now is an adventure. What we're doing right now could be a huge failure or a huge success, but either way, it's going to be a huge learning opportunity and a huge growing opportunity. And that is cool, you know, but, but also when I think about my family long-term and our long-term goals of being sustainable and being self-sufficient and 
having kids that have really practical skills and myself learning practical skills, like that's the long view and being prepared for anything because you never know what's going to happen in this world. And lately things are a little crazy. Maybe every generation says that and maybe it's true, but you want to be prepared. Okay. And my last thing, and I kind of, when I started this, when I started reviving this channel, I wasn't sure if I wanted to talk about my faith so much because I think it's okay when people want to keep that private, but I think I've just come to the realization that it's such a huge part of who I am. I just, I've got to talk about it because it's a huge part of how I act, what I think, what I do and obviously what I believe every day. So the other thing I'm doing in the long run is praying about it earnestly. And when I say prayer, I mean having a conversation with my Heavenly Father. I think sometimes when people pray, it ends up being, and I'm totally guilty of this, but it ends up being a laundry list for God. God, please don't let it be expensive when we go to get the van fixed. Heavenly Father, please let my kids have friends at school and make sure that this happens and this happens and this happens. But that's not a conversation. Conversation by definition is two way. So yes, you can take, I think it's more important to take your questions to the Lord than to take your requests. And I'm not saying you can't pray for something specific, but keep in mind, it's a conversation. So when I start doubting, I have to remember the reason that I first, like what catalyzed this journey in the first place. And that was me feeling very strongly moved by the spirit that it's time to move to somewhere where we can be self-sufficient in nature, prepared. And so when I start feeling doubtful, I just, I pray and I say, Lord, am I, am I still on the right path? Is this what we're meant to do? And if I, and then you stop and you listen. And for me, usually the answers come in thoughts in my mind that aren't me. And if you don't pray a lot, I know that might not make sense. <laughs> but I urge you to pray until it does. Um, because, you know, back to my one of my previous reasons, but if you don't, you know, and I spent a lot of my life being agnostic, agnostic to atheist and that did not work for me. It never filled the void. It was a roller coaster ride. It was not sustainable, which is part of what we're trying to do and part of who I am. And that was a little bit rambly, but I think that's what happens when you talk and walk. I guess I could also call, call this segment a rambling woman. If anyone gets that song reference. Anyways, that's about it. Thanks for listening. Maybe that'll help you if you're trying to find ways to stick with long-term goals that are hard. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. And I'm going to go get my kid from soccer practice. Okay, bye. <laughs>